we're going to look at ensembles. Ensembles are ways that you can bind multiple models together. And you can often combine even a very a couple of very weak models together and get better results, or even combine a, a really good model with a weaker model and also get get some pretty good results. Most top Kaggle competition winners make use of some sort of an ensemble. Likewise, for the competitions that I've run for my course, most students that do well in the Kaggle make use of some sort of an ensemble. The most simple way that you could use an ensemble, and this alone will give you some improvement in your Kaggle competition, is train something like a gradient boosted machine like XGBoost, train a, a deep neural network with PyTorch and then take the results from those two and basically average them. Take each prediction that you would have sent to Kaggle and sum those two values together and divide by two. Now as you get more advanced you'll learn that some models are better so you might want to do an 80-20 split so a weighting you'll do a weighted average. You would um, maybe multiply the the best model by 0.8 to the worst model by 0.2 but finding those coefficients the weight that can be a, a difficult part of this. And we're going to look in this part and see how you can basically use a linear regression to automatically fit those coefficients and determine really which is the stronger model. So the code that I provide here, we do make use of early stopping, so I went ahead and put, put that into there. But we are going to first take a look at how do you determine the ranking of these features that are inside of your models. So feature importance is a topic that we're also getting into in this part and we're going to see how to use perturbation feature ranking. The way that perturbation feature ranking is we're going to go through, say you have 10 columns, we're going to go through each of those 10 columns and after the neural network is already trained, because you don't want to have to train 10 different models to determine which of 10 different features is the most important, what we're going to do is go through the data and one by one, each of those 10 columns, we're going to perturb them. We're going to scramble them. That effectively destroys that feature, but all the distributions and most of the other statistical measures of that column remain the same. So as a result, you're going to now evaluate the neural network with that one column destroyed. That should cause your error to increase because you've taken one of your columns out of out of the mix. And then you do it for each of the other columns. Whichever column took the worst hit, the most increase in your error, that's the most important column because taking it out had the most effect. So what we're going to then do is establish that one as 1.0 and scale on down the other columns. So you'll see 1.0 is the most important feature ranked and then maybe 0.85 for the next one and, and so on as, as it goes down. To do the perturbation rank, what you're going to do is use this function that I give you here. It accepts a device so that knows if you're using CUDA or the CPU or the, the Apple Metal. You're going to pass in the X, which are your predictors, and then Y, which is the expected, the, the target, and then the names of the columns, and then a true or false if you're doing regression. If you're doing regression, do true. If you're doing classification, do false. And then we make sure that the model is converted to the appropriate device, and we begin to evaluate. So we're going to loop over all of the columns, and one by one, we are going to randomly perturb each of those columns. We're going to hold a copy of it so that we can restore it later. And then we do the predictions. We're going to look at the loss function. We're going to use mean square error loss if we're using regression. If we're using classification, it depends. If we have just one output, so it's a binary classification, then we're going to use the mean square error loss. If there's multiple, then we're going to use the softmax. And then we restore the value. So we just simply keep looping over each of these to determine what the error is when we perturb each of these values. And then we calculate the importance by looking at what was the maximum, what was the, the, the maximum error that we achieved, which is the most important feature. 
And then we we scale all the others to that. So 1.0 is going to be the most important feature and on down. So let's try this with classification. We're going to take the iris data set that we've seen many times before. And this is similar to what we've seen before. We're just training it. But now that it's trained, we're going to calculate the accuracy. The accuracy is 1.0, so it's, it's really accurate. And then... By the way, ignore the here's. I had some debugging code in there. I'll I'll remove that on the version you're you're looking at. But um, we're going to call the perturbation rank, and we track the errors on each of these. So the one with the highest error is the most important, and the importance just scales on down. Regression input perturbation ranking. So here we're going to do kind of the same thing, except this is the miles per gallon data set. So we're predicting the miles per gallon of a car. And we're going to loop through, train the whole thing, just like we did before. Print out the root mean square. It, so the RMSC is pretty good. We're within 3.8-ish units, which works pretty good. And then you can see the, the rankings. So the most important was origin. So yeah, this is a 1970s data set, so the car was coming from the U.S. It was not going to do so well. Uh, so that's partly why that. Weight is obviously very important. Year becomes important, too, because this tended to improve over time. So that's perturbation ranking, how you can tell if which feature is the most important. The advantage to this is it's basically a black box. It's not like we're going into the neural network or the random forest and looking at things that are unique to random forests or to deep neural networks. You could also use this to get you the feature importance of an ensemble. And ensemble, we're going to look at that now. We're going to look at the Kaggle Biological Response Competition. I'll open that quickly here. This is an older one, uh, but I, I like the data set for this particular thing. And it's predicting if a certain chemical sort of situation is going to elicit a biological response from some sort of a, an organism. So what we're going to do with this data set is we're going to read it in, print it out, and notice it has a lot of columns. So it's, it's almost square, not quite. But so we're going to take all of that data, pull it in, and we're going to split it into training and testing sets. If we uh, have GPU, we will certainly make use of it. And we set up the neural network to be trained on it. We run through all of this. We're looking at early stopping as well. And finally, we do the prediction. And we can see the log loss and accuracy. The accuracy is about 77. I mean, so not, not, too, not great, not horrible. But we're going to look at how we can do an ensemble on this one. But first, let's run it just through the... Yeah, and there's my debug. I need I totally need to fix that. So here you can see the most important columns uh, to the to the least important columns. And there's a lot of columns here, so we're not displaying all of them. And now we're going to do an ensemble on these. So we create a function to build the artificial neural network in PyTorch. We are also tracking the log loss, and we're going to use a basic normalization for the the neural networks. So we're going to blend the ensembles together with this function. And you can see the ensemble that we're building here is a neural network, k-nearest neighbors, a random forest, and a tree classifier, and gradient boosting. This is typically what you want to do with ensembling. You want to mix a number of these together. We're going to loop over all of the ensembles, and we are going to train on each of those. We'll use a logistic regression across all of these because we're, we've slowly collected up the data, the blended data set. So the blended data set is really just one row for each of the rows in the evaluation set, and then one column for each of these types of model that we put in here, these uh, seven or so that we have here. And then we're gonna use a logistic regression to simply fit the coefficients for each of those seven to get the lowest error. And that gives us the appropriate weighting that we can that we can use. And then we're able to um, train it and and get to the uh, the final neural network, the final ensemble model that we can use. This is something that you might want to look at in the Kaggle competition. At a minimum, I suggest just doing a, a even average across a couple of models. That will get you some additionally good results. But if you really want to hit it, use a linear regression to optimize the coefficients for an optimal weighting of your models that you've trained for this. 
Thank you for watching this video, and if this was useful, please click the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any more of this course. Talk to you later.